Welcome. What a beautiful crowd. You all look lovely. It's lovely to have you here. Ongi etori gustioi and bienvenido and dia yiv will come in and all of those things. I won't go through all of them. Uh, you have no idea how happy my colleagues and I are uh, to see such a distinguished group gathered here for our 25th uh, anniversary. And um, uh, before I go on and tell you all of that, I think the best thing is for me to do is to introduce you to our executive director, Krista Sedlacek, and let her welcome you properly. Krista. Thank you, Brenda. Secretary of State, uh, distinguished uh, guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really delighted to welcome you all here today to the vibrant city of Bilbao. And uh, as I am sure you will all agree to this beautiful venue for what promises to be a most memorable occasion. Unfortunately, matters of state linked to the forming of a new government have finally prevented the His Majesty King Felipe VI of Spain from joining us today. But we have been honored that until yesterday morning's developments, this event had been in the King's agenda for many months. And it would not have been the first time he had visited uh, EU Osha. He was here once, not as a king, but as a prince. Spain has been our home for 25 years now, and royal recognition of this particular bond between the European Union and the Kingdom of Spain continues to be very much appreciated. Nevertheless, I'm happy to pass on to you a personal message which we received from His Majesty, wishing our conference every success, together with his esteemed regards for each one of you. Now I'm delighted to extend a special welcome to Jost Korte, Director General of DG Employment, Social Affairs and Inclusion of the European Commission. Jost, uh, you have be, uh, taken over this role relatively recently, and I would like to thank you for the very tangible support we receive from you personally and from your excellent team. A warm welcome to you, Senora Yolanda Valde Olivas, Acting Secretary of State of Employment from the Ministry of Labor, Migration and Social Security. We are particularly grateful to your government for facilitating the signing of the seat agreement between the agency and the Kingdom of Spain. I would like to thank the Minister of Employment and Justice of the Basque government, Maria Jesus San Jose, for her presence here today. The support we have received from your government over the years is deeply appreciated. Thank you for being such a kind host to our agency. I'm also very pleased to see so many representatives from our partner organizations. Without your dedication and commitment over the years, we would not be in the position we are in today, celebrating an immensely successful 25 years of EU OSHA working together with you for a safe and healthy Europe. Since its foundation in 1994, EU OSHA has grown from an agency with just a handful of staff to one with almost 70 staff. We have successfully built an extensive tripartite uh, tri partner network in 39 European countries and have established fruitful international collaboration and the world-renowned reputation. I am pleased that Hans Horst Konkolewski and Jukka Dakala, my two predecessors as agency director, have been able to join us today. 
to celebrate this milestone in the history of EU OSHA. Through the commitment and activities of our staff and partners, the agency has succeeded in reaching out to the workplaces, providing authoritative information on occupation safety and health, and practical tools, raising awareness, and promoting a culture of risk prevention. While looking back at the agency's history and achievements, I have taken also the opportunity to reflect on my own career. I've always been passionate about health and safety. I feel incredibly fortunate to have been part of the agency for most of the past 25 years. I started working at EU OSHA in 1998 as one of the first members of staff to take up the role of a project manager. At that time, efforts were focused on establishing the now highly effective Europe-wide network of national focal points. I then moved into the position of head of the working environment unit and in 2003, I left for Berlin, working at national level and setting up the German initiative of a new quality of work, INQUA, before returning to the agency in 2011, taking up the role I'm very honored to be in now, namely the executive director. It has reinvented, uh, one moment, that's the wrong one. That's it. Uh, not only I have witnessed the growth and development of the agency during my time at EU OSHA, I've also had the pleasure of seeing the city we all call home transform into a jewel. It has reinvented itself, moving from a post-industrial town to one of Europe's top city break destinations. This is thanks to the tremendous efforts of successive uh, uh, Bilbao majors. Majors Ortuondo was the first one we were working together, Ascuna, Arezzo, and the current one, Aburto, and also the city authorities in regenerating abandoned industrial areas and attracting culture and tourism. In 2013, EU OSHA moved to its current premises in Bilbao's Miribilla district, an area with a long tradition of mining. And in 2014, Bilbao was secured as the agency's long-term home with the signing of a seat agreement between EU OSHA and the Kingdom of Spain. It is also worth noting that we are not just present in Bilbao. In 2005, we opened our Brussels liaison office, another milestone in our history. Ladies and gentlemen, we are living in rapidly changing times. In the past decades, the global importance of occupational safety and health has grown. We are witnessing phenomenal changes in our workplaces. The digital transformation is only beginning and uh, coupled with the aging of our population, new and emerging risks are developing all the time. It is not enough that the agency keeps pace with these developments. The speed of these technological advances demands that the agency must be ahead of the game. Our role is to firmly insert occupational safety and health into the workplaces of the future. Our three-parted structure is essential to ensure this. I'm pleased that the new founding regulation adopted this year in February acknowledges our key role and recognizes how tripartism is critical in making Europe's workplaces safer and healthier. Anniversaries can be a time for reflection, but they are also a time for looking forward. 
I hope that you enjoy both aspects of our discussions today. Dear friends and colleagues, I would like to warmly thank you all for being here and to celebrate a very special occasion. And it only remains for me to wish the agency, all staff and all partners, all the very best for the next 25 years. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, six months ago, Commissioner Mariana Tyson told us that this date was impossible for us uh, because she already had a commitment in her diary. Uh, however, she very kindly agreed to send us a nice video message. She made it especially for us, and I hope you like it. Your Majesty, Prime Minister, Sanchez, Prime Minister Dancila, President Urkuliu, dear Dr. Sedlacek, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure and honor to join you by means of a video message for this, this important event, celebrating the 25th anniversary of the European Agency for Safety and Health. Healthy and safe workplaces have been one of my priorities under this mandate. The number of accidents at work has gone down spectacularly, but every accident is one too many. Occupational diseases, both old and new, continue to take a high toll. We made health and safety at work a key principle of the European pillar of social rights. And we have been fighting occupational cancer caused by the exposure to dangerous chemical substances. We amended the carcinogens and mutagens at work directive this directive now covers exposure limits for an additional 26 cancer-causing chemicals. We estimate this will save 100,000 lives over the next 50 years. Health and safety at work was our priority, but we didn't invent it. European legislation has made European workplaces safer since the 1960s. But it is not enough to have fair rules. It's also necessary to implement them. And to do that, you have to be aware of the requirements. And it is useful to have good practice examples that you can follow. This is why 25 years ago, we established the European Agency for Safety and Health. To make sure that everyone, and most importantly, workers and employers, are aware of health and safety legislation and of good practices to implement it. Dear staff members and management of the agency, you have an important job. You help to keep Europe's workers healthy and our businesses safe. Through the quality of your research, advice, awareness campaigns and online tools. I am proud to call you my colleagues. I saw your dedication and commitment on my visit to your agency. And I also want to thank the social partners and government's representatives for playing an active role in the agency. We can only make work safe if the people in the workplace have a say, if employers and employees and governments together come up with solutions. Dear colleagues, your job does not end with health and safety. As a European agency, you are also our ambassadors here in Bilbao, in the Basque country and in Spain. You show how the European Union makes a difference by protecting people, by making working lives better. I thank Spain and the Basque country for being such excellent hosts to this fine agency. And I wish my colleagues at the agency a happy 25th birthday and many more safe healthy and happy years to come. Oh. Yeah, thank you very much, Commissioner Tyson, for that very nice message. Now, um, it's worth taking a moment to look around you, uh, to look at the walls and 
to look at the beautiful ceiling of this amazing venue. We are so grateful today to be in the world-renowned University of Deusto. And it is indeed for me a great pleasure and an honor to introduce Senor Juan Jose Echeverria to welcome us also. He is Vice Rector of the University of Deusto. Executive Director of the Agency, Mrs. Krista. Dear Director General of DG Employment, Social Affairs and Inclusion of European, Commis European Commission, <coughs> Ms. Jost. Dear Acting Secretary of State of Employment, Mrs. Yolanda. Dear Minister of Employment and Justice of Basque Government, Mrs. Maria Jesus. Dear all. Good afternoon and welcome to Bilbao. As Vice Rector for the University of Deusto, I would like to extend your warm welcome on behalf of all the university community and particularly for our Rector, Father Jose Maria Guibert. He is currently in Quito due to academic matters, but ask me to give you his kindness regards. We are meeting here in the, in the Paraninfo, the University of Deusto. Beautiful Paraninfo. You can look, contemplate this Paraninfo. Our university is now over 100 years old and without ever losing sight of its deep roots, it looks outward to the world and the future. Deusto was founded to address the challenges that Bilbao was facing at the end of the 19th century, when the city was an industrial, trade, and financial hub. And in today's digital, digital era and industry 4.0, we are still robust and looking to the future with confidence and optimism. With 11,000 students on official degree programs and over 5,000 in continuing and executive education, Deusto is a small Basque university which is open to the world. Women make up 60% of our total staff. We have developed our own educational model which set us apart. The Deusto educational model has been recognized on the international scene and was distinguished with the Global Teaching Excellence Award last year. Deusto was chosen as one of the world's top six universities in teaching excellence. And it is from this identity that we open ourselves to the world. Students from 79 countries are enrolled at Deusto. We have signed agreements with 500 partner universities across the world. Deusto forms part of the Aristos Campus Mundus, Campus of International Excellence, as a member of the strategic aggregation with the universities of Georgetown, Ford, and Boston College. And last year, we hosted the International Association Jesuit University World Assembly, which groups together 200 Jesuit universities from all over the world. Holding this event here at Deusto is an expression of our identity as an European university open to the world and committed to social transformation. It is a great honor for us to host the 15th 25th celebration of the, Europe, the European Agency for Safety and Health at Work because we are talking about Europe and a core topic, work. We are truly at a crossroads now. This is a of concern and uncertainty where Eurosceptics, Europhobes are pushing to write the Europe's epitaph. 
the time has come to bolster our belief in the European Union and the conviction that a united Europe is a project with a future. More Europe and a better Europe based on the belief that the Europe of the future will be social Europe or will not succeed. And work which has been one of the pillars underpinning this social Europe and is bound to be an even more important issue in the future. First of all, I would like to congratulate, congr congratulate the European Agency for Health and Safety at Work on its 25th anniversary. And also express my appreciation for the work that it is to make European workplaces safer and healthier and boosting the culture of prevention of occupational hazard. This is ultimately dignifying work and placing people first. As we are at a church university, if I must refer to the principles of the Catholic social teaching and the strong statement that although the traditional ways in which people work is expressed express, may change, the permanent demands must remain the same at our in short, respect for workers' inalienable rights. These rights include safety and health at work and are set down in the Chapter of Fundamental Rights of the European Union, which mark a great step forward and establish social rights in the scope of the Union. Work is changing. Technology, automation, robotics, digitalization are all impacting work and the way it is organized. These aspects raise a new challenge, a future with safe and healthy work for all. This affords an opportunity as well as a challenge. Both aspects will require setting up multi-level governance understood as a set of legitimate democratic and participatory formulas to efficiently regulate health and safety at work. We have solid bases in Europe, which have been developed by the European Agency for Health and Safety at Work over the past 25 years. We are in a strong position from which to face these new challenges and opportunities without ever losing sight of the essential principle of defense and promotion of dignity and people's inalienable rights at work. Therefore, in appreciation of the work done by the agency during the last 25 years and for the trust we place in their future work, I would like to wish them a happy birthday and a pleasant stay in Bilbao. I hope you will keep in your hearts and memories the image of this small university that is hosting you today with all possible enthusiasm and whose doors will always be open to you because we share a common goal. We are pleased to have you as our guest. Welcome, bienvenidos, Ongietorri, Suen Echean, Saudete. Milla Esker. Thank you very much, Mr. Echeverria. Our next guest is, it's his first official visit in his capacity as Director General of DG Employment of the European Commission. Now, I don't know what was going through his mind when he decided he would come to Bilbao. Um, maybe with so much going on in Brussels, he thought a little break might be nice. Well, it turns out he hasn't stopped working since he arrived late last night. He's already addressed our focal point network this morning. And then he subsequently met with all of the staff 
in the agency. I believe we're working him so hard, I'm worried he won't come back. But <laughs> maybe if you give him a very warm welcome, he will come back again. It's Mr. Joost Corte. <laughs> Dear um, Mrs. Uh, Valdioliva, Secretary of State, dear Minister of the Basque Region, dear Vice Rector, our host, dear Krista, distinguished participants, colleagues and friends. Um, it's busy in Brussels, but I'm extremely happy to be here. Nevertheless, I'm really pleased to be here. I'm honored to be here to celebrate uh, together with you the 25th anniversary of uh, the uh, European Agency for Safety and Health at Work, EOSHA. You just saw in the video message of uh, Commissioner Tyson how much she, and I can also testify uh, the President of the European Commission, Mr. Juncker, how uh, extremely appreciative they both are of the work that has been done here over the last uh, 25 years, uh, for the support that the agency has been able to, um, to receive from, um, from the Spanish and the Basque authorities. So a great thank to all of you for this. And this with a very, very small number of people. Krista mentioned somewhere in the middle of her speech that there are actually less than 70 people. So the staff of EOSHA that has been doing all this great work is less big than you in this room. Uh, and I think this also uh, shows how incredibly efficient uh, the agency has been set up. I see here two, two previous executive directors who are also, I think, been absolutely crucial in building this, uh, this effective uh, organization, which has a huge impact on workers, social partners, employers, and indeed on the whole area of uh, safety and health at work in the European Union. Now, if you turn 25 years, it's also maybe the first moment to look a bit back at what has been achieved uh, over those 25 years. And I think if we put EU OSHA's work in the context of the European Union's uh, ambitions in the area of uh, safety and health at work, we can distinguish maybe three stages. The first is the very early days, the, the Rome Treaty in the early 60s, the beginning of the European integration process, which already defined at the start the importance of safety and health uh, in the workplace. It has from the start been an important issue of values, I think, and also of level playing field, within the single market or the internal market, as it was called at the time. And uh, I don't think we should, we should forget this. It has been there uh, from the start. I think a second stage uh, started with the negotiations and entry into force of the European Single Act in the 80s, which recognized fully the importance of OSH uh, for the European Union and provided also a specific uh, legal basis in the treaty the famous Article 118A that I'm sure many of you will still uh, remember. And it was on this legal basis that we saw a pretty dramatic increase of European Union uh, legislation. A number of important directives were adopted in the, in the early 90s. And it is then also that uh, the decision was taken to create a specific agency to help the implementation of this new legislation on the ground. Uh, the agency was given a very clear objective, it's a very operational task it was given, uh, to better protect the, the health and safety of workers and to do that the agency had to provide the European Union institutions, the member states, social partners and the main stakeholders with technical, scientific and economic information in the field of OSH. And I can say now that we are more or less at the third stage, 25 years later, it is clear that EU OSHA has fully found its place in the EU policy agenda. The agency has become, without any doubt, a crucial actor in this context. And I think what happened under the Juncker Commission over the last five years testifies how important this is. It was really put squarely in the middle of the policy agenda of this European uh, Commission. And Commissioner Tyson herself made clear right from the start of her mandate how she committed is personally to fighting in particular occupational cancer and how this has become a priority in fact for the whole of the Commission. She then set out her views in a communication which was published in 2017 
safer and healthier work for all. Then the Commission continued. Some important legislative initiatives were delivered in this area, such as the three legislative amendments to the Carcinogens and Mutagens Directive, covering 26 cancer-causing chemicals. And as the Commissioner already indicated herself in her message, these initiatives will improve the protection of not, least than, not less than 40 million workers and should help save approximately 100,000 lives in the next 50 years. The three revisions of the CMD directives are part of a much broader legislative agenda that the Juncker Commission deployed. In fact, over the last five years, 27 legislative proposals were put forward, of which now 24 have been adopted. And I think the legacy, the Commission isn't over, but the legacy already stands very, very firmly in this area. The work isn't finished, however. Uh, it's an ongoing process we still need to considerably strengthen further the protection of workers from the exposure to carcinogenics. And my services are actually at the moment working on the preparation of further amendments to the CMD directives in close cooperation with the tri Tripartite Advisory Committee for Safety and Health at Work. I referred briefly to the communication of 2017 in which the Commissioner set out her priorities for uh, OSH under her mandate. And I would like to single out four points where you can see how important the contributions and the support of EU OSHA has been. The first, and I think probably the most important one, is the support for micro enterprises and small and medium enterprises. Um, they are, in fact, accounting for nearly 99% of businesses in the European Union, employing around half of the total workforce and they are the backbone of the EU economy and also driving forward innovation and growth. Uh, and that's also why they are an important instrument to foster social inclusion. But if you have a small company, maybe employing one or two persons, how on earth can you comply with the rather highly sophisticated standards that are being adopted under the OSH agenda in Europe? This is a, a huge challenge. And the support that the agency has been providing to these companies, 99% of the European businesses, by facilitating information, by providing them with practical tools, has been absolutely essential to ensure that they can comply in an appropriate way with these complicated rules in order to take better care of the health and safety of their workers. So that, I would think, is the first very, very tangible contribution that EU OSHA has has given to the agenda. A, a second important substantial contribution is in the area of raising awareness. For instance, through the ongoing healthy workplace campaigns on dangerous substances, which pays particular attention to the risks provoked by carcinogens and mutagens. Thirdly, uh, the department in Iowasha that uh, is in charge of research should also be mentioned here. Solid research, which has made a major contribution to the development of evidence-based policy work and measures, is a further prominent role of the agency. And here I'd like to mention ESINER, which is the agency survey on new and emerging risks. It's a very good example of another practical tool that helps us all a lot. Its findings and results are now widely used by policymakers, including indeed by us in the European Commission. And finally, fourthly, over the last years, the agency has been playing a crucial role in facilitating the implementation of the legislation through the design and dissemination of practical tools. Today, this is more necessary than ever. I would refer here to the OIRA tool the, and also to the e-guide on managing stress and psychosocial risks, which was published on the occasion of the Healthy Workplaces campaign in 2015. Another good example of practical instruments that support companies, in particular the smaller ones, to better manage their OSH requirements. To conclude my introduction here, I'd like to say a few words about the future. With the emergence of technological developments, such as digitalization, robotization or artificial intelligence, the agency will certainly continue to evolve 
in order to remain effective and in tune with the societal evolution, as well as to provide stakeholders with the most recent information, helping to tackle new risks. And it was very interesting to see that um, as recently as this week, the, uh, the advisory committee indeed dis did already discuss uh, a future strategic framework for OSH, uh, which would succeed to the, the one that's currently in force and which will expire in 2020. And also next week in Luxembourg, when the ministers will meet in the EBSCO Council, they will approve a set of conclusions specifically targeted at the OSH area, which also put the future agenda and mentions a number of very important challenges that will need to be addressed. So there's no shortage of work. Being well prepared for future developments in OSH implies, of course, a strong capacity of anticipation. And the agency is working in a proactive way to anticipate all kinds of potential scenarios, in particular through the foresight projects on new technologies. The Commission will certainly continue to promote OSH and accompany its changes and developments over the next years, also with the strong support of the agencies. And on top of all these important challenges and all the important work that's being done by the agency, there's something that I would like to mention at the end of my, sp of my speech. And this is that the agency has really managed to be very attentive to the real needs and the real challenges of workers and businesses. The tripartite nature of the agency, in which workers, employers, governments and the Commission are represented, is certainly absolutely vital for its success. We know well that the active commitment of all the relevant actors, and in particular the social partners, is a critical factor of success. This tripartite commitment is particularly relevant for the good dissemination of the products and the deliverables of the agency, ensuring that they can reach the intended users and beneficiaries. An excellent example are the Good Practices Awards that are given during the Healthy Workplaces campaigns, through which the agency recognizes the excellence of the best and most successful projects to improve occupational safety and health. Once again, the tripartite active engagement is a key factor of success in making the right choices. So I'm indeed very happy to see that the agency has become what I would call a hub between all the players in the field of OSH. Policymakers, social partners, experts, practitioners, researchers, and everybody else who is interested in this field. And this again, with a very, very small number of staff. I think EU OSHA must be the smallest agency of the European Union. But surely its output is enormous. I would therefore like to conclude by expressing again my deep recognition for the great work that the agency has been doing. You are and have always been a very reliable partner. The excellence of the work is recognized by all the stakeholders and your contribution to saving lives at the workplace to improving working conditions cannot be underestimated. On behalf of the European Commission, I'm looking very much forward to continuing this fruitful and successful cooperation. Together, we can and must tackle the many challenges that lie ahead of us. The work is not finished. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Corsi. Thank you very much. Uh, we mentioned earlier that there's a lot going on in Brussels. Well, there's a lot going on in Madrid too. And that's why we're particularly happy given that this week the very important work of forming a government is continuing in Madrid, we're very pleased to welcome the Acting Secretary of State of Employment from the Ministry of Labour, Migration and Social Security, uh, Senora Yolanda Valde Olivas. Thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you so much. Dear authorities, Executive Director of the Agency, European Agency, DG for Employment, Social Affairs and Inclusion, querido Vice-Rector, 
Querida consejera, thank you, you so much for inviting me, for inviting me to participate in this inaugural session, in an event so important for European health and safety and work, and in particular for this European, European agency, called to defend the most basic rights of European workers. I wish this day be a success and everyone enjoy their story, their stay in this cozy, amazing and beautiful city of Bilbao. And now I speak in Spanish because we are in Spain. <laughs> Spanish is a beautiful language <laughs> and is an official language of Union, European Union. I was saying that I'd like to express and extend my gratitude to the director of the European Agency uh, because uh, this uh, for allowing me to take part in this event of a celebration of the 25th year of the European Agency for Health and Safety at Work. This agency has brought together a broad representation of all the different uh, actors uh, that uh, participate uh, in the uh, decision making of all issues that affect uh, health and safety of uh, workers in different uh, domains of this agency that includes uh, European institutions and national governments, uh, social stakeholders and uh, experts in all different uh, prevention uh, domains without leaving aside the entrepreneurs and workers at their workplaces uh, that we are all attentive uh, of. They are all uh, decisive agents uh, and the aim uh, to improve uh, the working uh, conditions, uh, which means improving uh, living conditions of European citizens in the end. For this reason, uh, this uh, meeting uh, represents a great opportunity to uh, ratify a common commitment uh, to the uh, task uh, that has been carried out by the agency over the last 25 years, a short time, but also a long time. The agency has been uh, putting forward uh, initiatives so that workplaces in Europe will be safer and uh, more productive. Uh, a day, a celebration like today, and a celebration day like today, we need to look at the past in order to remember that it was uh, 1989 with the publication of the Framework Directive uh, when uh, this uh, process uh, started, this uh, process that has brought it uh, to in Bilbao today when a community norm was approved with the common legislative principles for Europe in the area of health and safety at work. And I must uh, highlight uh, the high uh, rate of uh, accidents at work uh, that we had at the beginning of the 90s, a factor that led to the fact that the European Commission uh, declared uh, 1992 as a European year for health and safety at work. And this is the context in which uh, 25 years ago the um, European Agency for Health and Safety at Work was created uh, with its seat in this wonderful and beautiful city of Bilbao. Uh, and on behalf of the uh, government of Spain, on behalf of the uh, Labour Minister, Migration and uh, Social Security, on behalf of her, uh, I'd like to congratulate the European Agency, both uh, for the work that has been carried out by its workers and also by the leadership carried out by its uh, different directors uh, for the uh, successful uh, coordination uh, they've uh, carried out in the last uh, 
25 years uh, in the important field of health and safety at work. Uh, most especially, I'd like to highlight uh, the creation of a European network uh, that has uh, become extremely consolidated and that is made up by national inst international institutions uh, that promotes the exchange of know-how and best practices in the field of uh, health and safety at work in every single corner of the European Union, and that strengthens the commitment uh, to the health and safety of work, uh, uh, work in order to reach the objective of uh, promoting safe and healthy workplaces in Europe. Without uh, it uh, representing a risk for the competitiveness of European economy and uh, our European companies, because uh, both values are compatible. I'd also like to congratulate the agency for their work uh, when observing and compiling technical, scientific, uh, social, and economic information in the area of uh, health and safety at work, because uh, this uh, will allow us and allows us uh, to uh, identify needs and to put forward uh, solutions and proposals and to consolidate a sound uh, European uh, task force for uh, providing uh, collaboration and support uh, to uh, third uh, countries outside the European Union. The components of the European Union that make up a focal point in each country, social stakeholders in the European domain, uh, institutions and companies that are associated and are that our partners of uh, the campaigns are, uh, receive the support of workers from the agency. And their shared work and joint work in this network have uh, turned this European system into an international reference in the field of uh, health and safety at work. It, uh, the role played by the European agency is essential because with its uh, different uh, activities that it promotes is uh, contributing uh, to uh, raise the awareness of uh, relevant uh, aspects of health and safety at work. After all, it is generating a prevention culture. Its actions aimed at all European citizens through its governments, through its stakeholders, and through the media. All this is built on the basis of technical information, scientific information, social economic information that is uh, compiled in a rigorous uh, fashion, and all this um, contributes uh, to the achievement of its goals. And I'd like to uh, conclude uh, by uh, drawing your attention to the future of uh, health and safety at work. I would like to express the uh, firm uh, commitment by the government of Spain to support the European Agency for Health and Safety at Work in order for it to tackle all the uh, challenges uh, that it will be facing in the future with the new challenges uh, that uh, technological evolution entails, together with digital economy and the globalized economy, together with health and safety at work, uh, in line with uh, future uh, work strategy of the international uh, labor uh, organization, and also from the Spanish uh, government uh, providing support uh, to the uh, sustainable uh, goals of the uh, 2030 agenda of the UN with its uh, goal number eight uh, that we uh, call decent uh, work and uh, how it affects us in its 8.8 .8, uh, goal where it says to promote uh, a safe uh, uh, riskless uh, work environment for all workers. My uh, sincere congratulations. Happy birthday to the agency. My sincere congratulations to this agency and its excellent task. We, because uh, 
we are convinced of the fact that prevention and, uh, and the collaboration with uh, entrepreneurs uh, workers, all these are fundamental values that must uh, guide our steps in order to reduce accidents at work, professional illnesses, and to improve uh, the uh, well-being at work, because health and safety at work is not just the absence of uh, illness, it is uh, uh, well-being at work, and these values will be present, I am sure, in uh, the next uh, years of the work of the agency. And once again, I'd like to ratify and I'd like to repeat uh, the commitment uh, by the Spanish uh, government to the uh, well done work uh, that you people have done over the last uh, 25 years and that I'm sure will uh, become uh, many more years. Thank you very much for your attention. Muchas gracias. Uh, well, um, after those very kind words, um, several people have, of course, mentioned today the link between those of us who work here in, in Libya and the agency, our link with the city of Bilbao and with the Basque uh, province and the Basque government. Therefore, it's with great pleasure that I'd like to invite the um, consejera Maria Jesus San Jose to say a few words to us on behalf of the Ministry for Employment and Justice of the Basque Government. Thank you. Eskeri Gasco. Thank you very much uh, for your kind words uh, and I'd like to say hello to all of you and to those who've uh, taken the floor before me. Good afternoon, uh, dear authorities, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It is an honor and a privilege uh, to address a few words uh, here at the University of Deusto. Welcome to Euskadi, to the Basque Country. We are gathered here for a wonderful celebration, the 25th uh, anniversary of the European Health and Safety at Work Agency. Uh, Many years are devoted to improving the health of European workers and uh, the best possible thing to do is to organize an event like today's event, but we also celebrate the 25 years of the presence of the agency here in Bilbao. This is why we should be feel even uh, prouder. So congratulations on behalf of the Labor and Justice Department and the uh, Basque government as a whole, the European agency of which we feel part of uh, has uh, achieved a uh, lot of uh, progress over the last uh, 25 years uh, that uh, uh, results in an improvement of health and safety of many European workers. It's a tremendously important function and this is backed up by the data that prove the professionalism with which it is being carried out. This is why I would like to acknowledge uh, your work because it is contributing to uh, get to reach the objective uh, pursued by us in the field of uh, health and safety at work, because the idea is to respond to uh, the reality of uh, preventing risks at work and to uh, uh, focus on uh, these areas and to implement uh, this model and of uh, health and safety in our uh, Basque country and to be able to innovate and to respond to the shift in paradigms. The idea is to uh, put forward and to address the challenges like uh, uh, digital economy, aging, safety in construction, uh, traffic engineering, or the dilemma of whether we can 
and be happy at work. This is why I'd like to highlight, as my predecessors have done, I'd like to highlight uh, uh, labor well-being and because we don't want to give this up. In fact, you, our uh, European agency, are setting that objective in your uh, community framework in the domain of uh, health and safety at work up to 2020. The reality of our uh, autonomous region has adapted uh, to this uh, in order to reach a uh, sustained improvement of uh, working conditions in our autonomous region. People's well-being means that um, they must be able to work in decent conditions, safe conditions, healthy conditions, and this activity shouldn't just uh, not harm our workers, but rather for it to become a source of satisfaction, among other things, because working in a satisfactory manner and in good conditions uh, promotes uh, the satisfaction of people, their motivation, and uh, competitiveness. And in this area, we cannot forget the fact that there's uh, still a lot to be done. What is obvious is that we must uh, be watchful of the uh, last uh, trends in order to go deeper in the prevention of uh, labor risks in different domains. And to this end, we need to develop a collaboration among stakeholders and to achieve uh, the uh, integration of this uh, um, uh, philosophy at workplaces, because uh, uh, preventing risks should be considered as uh, value, as an asset in the framework of uh, consolidation a sustainable and competitive workplace. We are celebrating these 25 years on the same year of the uh, anniversary of the International Labour Organization. Uh, the Basque country, Spain, Europe, and the world uh, as a whole have uh, great challenges in order to keep on building a safe uh, future in the area of uh, work. And I'm sure we will succeed because we can not have uh, quality uh, jobs uh, if we don't guarantee uh, the health and safety of uh, women and men uh, who uh, work. Technology, uh, digitization, robotics, and nanotechnology are already a reality, and these uh, our challenges we are responding to from the Agency for Health and Safety at Work through the different uh, studies uh, uh, that have recently been published. Uh, demogra demographics, aging, equality between men and women are also challenges in the field and health and safety. And these are challenges that we challenges we will turn into improvements, uh, into opportunities. The agency is an example of a determination in the improvement in health and safety of our citizens in our dear Europe. And I don't want to conclude without uh, ratifying our commitment to cooperate with the agency and all workers, men and women, because uh, we want to uh, make sure that uh, uh, to, we want to convince uh, everybody that uh, risks and accidents uh, can be uh, avoided. This is uh, why we will keep on fighting endlessly. We will keep on doing research, and we will keep on uh, uh, implementing the necessary uh, means uh, approaching uh, education and training as a key uh, pillars uh, to health and safety. But we will succeed. Once again, thank you all very much. Uh, congratulations, and uh, let's uh, keep on building a better Europe. Uh, thank you so much for your attention. Escrigasco, Consejera. Well, uh, we are now coming to the coffee break, but there is no such thing as a free coffee. So you're going to have to stay with us for another three to four minutes, because any minute now, a very talented photographer is going to join me here on the stage. And we're going to ask all panelists uh, who will be later in the panels, and all speakers from this, from this afternoon, to face the stage here, standing on the steps, so that we can get a photo of you with all of the people in the background. Do you think you're able for that? And then afterwards, we're going to do a video clip, 
And while he's filming, we're going to ask you, under my direction, to shout out, Happy Birthday, EU OSHA. <laughs> Thank you. So, so if you could remain in your seats for a moment, and we'll just ask the panelists and our very important guests to come here. And thank you, just here on the steps. Fantastic, yeah, yeah. Where's the photographer? Where's the photographer? The photographer, well, he's here. Yeah, but he said he wants to come up here and take it that way. Ah, yeah, okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> Just a moment. Just a moment. Actually, uh, well, yeah, I know, but Chris is not listening to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Krista. We yeah. want you to go down the steps Already. and face yes. this way. As I see you are we should go down. Yes, yes, because we want all the people in the background. Thank you, thank you. So go down and face this way. Yeah. Gorka, can you help? Thank you. So now you turn this way, Krista. Yeah, exactly. That's it. And how do I know when he's doing the filming? Do you want me to ask them to say yeah. happy birthday? Yes. Yes? Okay, so... <laughs> may I ask you all, please, on the count of three, to shout out happy birthday, EU OSHA, loudly. So, one, two, three. Happy birthday, EU OSHA. It's okay? Thank you, I think you deserve a coffee now. I'll see you back here at five. Thank you.